time for business now. Madison's just helping me decide whether I've drawn on my face with my pen. Um, she, I haven't. I'm she clear. Has I'm in the clear. For those okay. uh, listening on radio, uh -huh. she's she's clear of, clear of ink on the face. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go to business now. Um, regulators have had another look into bank misconduct. What have they found? This time it was just the Financial and Markets Authority, and they were looking into specifically banking sales incentive structures for frontline staff. So that's things like mostly bonuses, commission, also competitions and prizes all linked to making sales. Now those are sales like home loans, credit cards, uh, term deposits, uh, even insurance, so life insurance, car insurance, and also investments like KiwiSaver. Now there were nine banks involved in this one. So they were the, the nine major retail banks, including the, the top five, your ANZ, ASB, Westpac, BNZ, Kiwi Bank, in that order, in fact. <laughs> and, and, and what the FMA did find uh, within this was that uh, staff and managers are certainly too sales focused, uh, so that actually puts them at odds with customers' interests when they are selling uh, those types of products and services to them. Meaning they're driven by their own financial gain rather than whether it's the best for the customer or not? Exactly. Yeah, and okay. typically the size of that financial gain on average for salespeople uh, at banks is about $6,000 that they kind of uh, have available to them uh, on average to to make per year, uh, but in one case there was actually one uh, top bank salesperson who earned two thousand and seventy nine hundred thousand uh, dollars in the Whoa. in one year just in sales target. So that's how big it can get, and that costs uh, across those nine retail that's banks. That's a big incentive to push, push, push. Exactly, it's a lot of money for for one person. Uh, obviously, we didn't get uh, too much detail about what bank that was. The uh, the the FMA didn't give too much away there. I did uh, interview the uh, head of regulation at the Financial Markets Authority uh, today, Liam Mason, and I asked him if banks had ever missold uh, products uh, in regards to trying to achieve those sales incentives. Here's what he said. Um, we've certainly seen some um, some instances where that's occurred. It wasn't the purpose of this exercise to go into files and, and phone records and the rest and, and look at particular instances. We're looking at the settings. What we see is those settings drive a much higher risk of poor customer outcomes. Why not go in and actually find out what this has resulted in for customers? Why, why play nice? So, so we have um, looked at individual cases when they come up. The reason that we took this thematic approach uh, was because this is an issue that we see affecting the entire industry. And it's one that's received already quite a bit of attention overseas. So this was a chance really to take stock of what's going on over, he over here. Is it high risk? We think it is. Does it need to change? We think it does. But you think banks already haven't gone far enough in putting these measures in place. So what makes you think that following this review, will you tell them to, I guess, just tighten up that they will? I think that the, the societal expectations, if you like, around what banks should be delivering for customers have changed, have risen over time. Um, banks are recognising that, and that's why we're seeing some changes already underway. We've given banks until March next year to come back and tell us how they're going to respond to um, our recommendations. And then we've said we're, we're going to report on what we find there. So any any bank that doesn't want to or decides not to implement these changes, they need to explain to us so what's the case they can make that they can look after their customers. That's Liam Mason, the Head of Regulation at the Financial Markets Authority that I interviewed today about their bank incentive structure report. Uh, I also went to the top five banks as well that all of their, um, all of their employees were interviewed by the FMA uh, for this investigation. And I asked them, you know, obviously what they thought, uh, what sales incentives they did have for frontline staff. The big four told me that they'd actually already got rid of them uh, earlier this year. Uh, but obviously, as Liam mentioned there, they don't think banks have gone far enough with what they've already done. The only one out of the top five who hasn't is Kiwi Bank. So that, really? they're, they're obviously uh, state owned. Uh, so it seems yeah. like the government is giving two sides of the story here. One regulator on one side telling all banks to get rid of our sales incentives, but then the state owned bank hasn't done that. But I did speak to them today and they said, quote, we are working on it. Let's uh, hear quickly what happened in the markets. The NZX top 50 index fell, hardly even worth mentioning, just two points, so that's 0.02%. Uh, so we're closing tonight at 8,825 points. The New Zealand dollar uh, still definitely buying stronger, so that's buying at 67.8 US cents. This morning it was above 68 US cents. We haven't seen that since about July. Uh, we're buying at 93.5 to the Australian and 52.3 British pence.